We listened to Anthony Blinking there, the uh, relations between... Well, let's get you more on this. I'm joined here in the studio by our international affairs editor, Armin George. And Armin, it's clear, I mean, we listened to Anthony Blinking there. The uh, relations between uh, the US and China are increasingly strained. Well, this Chinese decision to suspend cooperation in some key areas is actually a big shift. Up until now, China had said had taken what it thought was a pragmatic approach uh, that even though there were major areas of disagreement with the US, human rights, inf uh, intellectual property, things like that, nonetheless, the areas that they could work together, for example, climate change, they would do so. The fact that China has made this decision to suspend cooperation in key areas, it shows that it is no longer willing to keep the door open on certain kinds of cooperation. And this visit by Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan has, in a sense, convinced or at least confirmed to Beijing that the US is absolutely determined to suppress China in what China considers to be its own backyard. Obviously, Taiwan doesn't see things that way. Uh, but, you know, for, for years, Chinese officials have said what they want is uh, coexistence and cooperation. Of course, China's critics would say, well, the actions didn't support that. But certainly the official line was that China wanted some kind of harmonious coexistence and that now they see that the US is determined to go down a path of confrontation. And so China's kind of switching now and saying, well, if that's what the US wants, then we will respond to that. And But I think to, to suspend, for China to suspend this cooperation, it also, Rochelle, speaks to a level of confidence, you know, that Beijing really has grown very confident in its own economic model, its own model of governance, uh, its own approach to international, to global politics. Uh, Xi Jinping said uh, at a key meeting last year that he thought time and momentum are on China's side. So they have this sense of confidence that if the US has, from Beijing's point of view, chosen a path of confrontation instead of consensus, then China is ready to take on that challenge in, in a long term way. I mean, we're seeing these, uh, you know, continued uh, military drills. Uh, China says, look, we're ultimately just, uh, you know, checking out uh, our troops and, you know, how they uh, can work together. But, I mean, where can things go from here? Because these frosty uh, relations are, you know, a, a U-turn, if you will. Things seem to be OK on the surface. This visit has come and, you know, things have, have gone haywire, essentially. Well, if we if we take these... these uh, uh, it's, it's quite significant, actually, that the... the uh, bilateral uh, points where the China has said it's not going to work with the US anymore. Uh, you've basically, they've talked about three areas, uh, military to military cooperation, climate change, and counter narcotics. Mm. Uh, there was a time when China uh, made some moves on counter narcotics in the light of the US opioid e epidemic in 2018 to 2019. Uh, China moved to, to regulate uh, certain kinds of uh, fentanyl uh, and its analogues uh, as a result of US lobbying. I think it's fair to say that though over time, uh, China's cooperation with the US on drugs, counter drugs policy sort of waned a little bit as the overall relationship deteriorated. And we can see a similar dynamic, actually, if we're honest, in the military to military uh, sphere as well. Uh, in the past, the US and Chinese militaries, they had more of an emphasis on deconfliction, on transparency, on preventing some sort of misunderstanding leading to a major confrontation between two nuclear armed powers. As the overall relationship deteriorated, they focused more on things like disaster relief, you know, humanitarian things, where the militaries of both countries could be involved. Uh, so I think we'd already seen a kind of steady erosion of those areas of cooperation, mm -hmm. frankly. But one area where I think the suspension of cooperation Operation is very significant is on climate change because you will remember at the uh, at the big international summit in Glasgow uh, there was uh, an, uh, an agreement that was unveiled between the US and China uh, to reduce methane emissions protecting forests phasing out coal and the fact that this agreement was struck between the two two of the world's uh, the world's two largest emitters of carbon dioxide that was hailed as something of a breakthrough in the
in the context of the COP26 in Glasgow, that is now presumably on hold. And that, I would argue, is probably quite a significant uh, setback to the, the global climate agenda. As you say, uh, another uh, major setback in US-China relations for now. Our international affairs editor, Armin Georgian. Thank you.